Amen. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, inspiring hymn that before the message. I would like to thank Brother Larlex for for picking that song because it relates to our um, lesson this morning. Um, I think it's not a coincidence, but God is really guiding us uh, through all of this. So it inspired me and encouraged me to dig deeper into the lesson this morning. So, um, and um, once again, I would like to thank the uh, the eldership and the congregation for this opportunity and giving me the chance to to um, share uh, God's message with you this morning. And for all the other brethren who was doing it, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, and let's go in our brother and prayer for a little bit before we start the lesson. Let's pray. Holy and divine God, our Lord and Savior, we thank you once again for this opportunity to be together, though we are virtually um, worshiping you, we know, Father God, that we are united in our heart, in our mind, and in our spirit as we worship you and praise you, your divine name and your holy name. Thank you, Father, for being a great God and always looking after us. Father, as we uh, continue our service this morning, uh, please guide us as we go through the lesson and Use your servant as a vessel so that I could impart the words that um, I could share to them the good news of your salvation and the, the good news that is in you because you are the truth. Father, forgive us our transgressions and thank you, Father God, for all the things that you've done for us. And we ask this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Rex, for uh, reading the uh, our... Uh, uh, text this morning, taken from John 14, verses, verses, John 14, verses 1 to 14. Okay. So our lesson this morning, I entitled it, the first part of the verse is, Let not your hearts be troubled, taken from John chapter 14, verse 1 to 14. Was there a time in your family when um, you and your wife as a parent were going away for a vacation or just to get away for a certain number of days and you have to leave your children by themselves? If your children are over the age of 16 or if there's somebody at the, over the age of 16 and younger, then you can leave them by themselves at home. But for sure, before you leave them and go for a period of time, you will surely give them a list of things that they should be doing while you and your wife are away. You will probably write them on a piece of paper or the things that they need to do or to maintain the continuity of life you are leaving them uh, to make sure that they they are safe and uh, make sure that they have food, uh, a list of not to do things, emergency contacts, or sometimes a code to the panic room or <laughs> where to press the panic button if needed. But all of this, kidding aside, there are things that should be put into consideration before leaving the important things behind. As parents, we have to make sure that we give them the guidelines or the instructions to make things in their life run smoothly while you're away. It will be comforting to know that you said everything you need to say and give the, all the instructions and the steps that are needed in case out of the ordinary will arise while dad and mom are away. Things like, example, trash days on a Friday, Make sure the garbage is out on a Thursday night. The sprinkler system twice a week. Water the plants at the back of the patio. No parties allowed. Likewise, the children, they will feel safe and confident that all will be well, even while parents are not around. But we know somehow some children behave when parents are out, 
uh, what is that saying? When the cat is away, the mouse will play. Like, hey, uh, after, hey, dude, my parents are out, uh, are out today. Uh, they're going away. Uh, call everybody and we can have a party. Oh, some children do that. But anyway, even that thing, parents has already considered that. That's why the panic button or a 911 is part of the list. Well, just like to highlight the principle behind it. Another way to look at an example in the process of, another way to look at an example is the process of uh, when you are planning to retire. Um, I had an opportunity to uh, learn this process from a friend from work. His name was Tom Grant. Uh, sadly, he passed away last March. But even though um, he, he guided me and he taught me the, the process before you retire, you have to go this and do this and everything. You know, um, you, you need to prepare things before they happen and leave everybody you love safe and secure. In our world, especially today, it's financial stability. But to us, as Christians, spiritual stability and moral values are essential. You know what I'm trying to get across. The principle, leaving everything in order. In our text this morning, John 14, 1 to 14, Jesus is about to leave his disciples to, pul to fulfill his purpose in this earth, to fulfill the prophecy about him. In this narrative of John, Jesus is giving his instructions to his beloved disciples. Oh, he loved them so much. John 13 once said, um, Jesus uh, 13 and John 13 1, Jesus showed them humility, but the Bible says that he loved them very much. At this moment in time, it was the night of the Passover feast. Jesus has already instituted the Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper. And he took this opportunity to intimately instruct his disciples about the things that will take place and about to happen. For he is going away. Earlier, he showed them an example of humility by washing their feet. And he explained it to them, the meaning of it, to make them understand. He was giving his last instructions to his beloved disciples in the most detailed manner that they will understand it by heart. He knew that the hour had come for the prophecy to take place, and he didn't want to leave them wondering what had happened. John 13, 21, Jesus said, was Jesus said was trouble excuse me John 13 21 and Jesus said his heart his spirit is troubled let me read that again John 13 21 said that Jesus was troubled in his spirit there you go because he knew that his time had come and no one of his disciples, and one of his disciples will be the instrument of the devil to make him suffer. This made him sad and a little bit troubled. John 12, 27 to 30. Jesus is talking. Now is my soul troubled? And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? He said, but being the leader of the group, he should be the encouragement. For he knows that the disciples will be scattered after his arrest. And they will be frightened and they will be in hiding. He knew their every weakness. That is why he spent time with them in that upper room. And for the last remaining hour with them, gave them encouragement and a sense of security to handle things among them and to themselves ready when he leaves. John 16, 1 to 4. 
Jesus said, I have told you these things to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is opening service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father. Nor me. But I have said these things to you, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. They will be scattered like ships without a shepherd, but only for a while because he will come back for them and see them before ascending back to the Father in heaven. Since this scene of the gospel is the parallel message of Jesus Christ to his disciples before going to the cross, let us recount the instructions and the comforting words of Jesus to reassure them about the victory in trusting in him. I enumerated seven, but probably there is more. But as of now, we'll check all these things. He said on the text, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, and believe also in me. Number two, he assured them that the place where he is going, he will prepare a place for them, for permanent dwelling. Number three, he assured them that he will come back for them and to take them himself to the place he prepared for us. Number four, he assured them that they will know the way in getting there because he is the way. He is them a helper or a counselor to be with them forever which is the spirit of truth or the Holy Spirit and he promised them the assurance of peace he said do not let your heart be troubled Jesus is telling them that they should put their faith in God as well unto him for he said, I and the Father are one. And all the comfort you need from the Father in heaven can be brought to Jesus because Jesus is the only way they could get comfort from the Father. He told them that upon his leaving, he will prepare a place for each of them in heaven where they will live with him forever. And he is coming back to take him, to take them himself. He told them, you know the way to the place where I'm going. Just like an earthly father telling his children that it is going to be all right. I will leave you for a while and I will come back. And if you will take heed and understand my instructions to you, you will be all right. Well, just the subject of be a place prepared for us because Jesus is living and preparing a place for us. I remember the, the, uh, the story where the, the Israelites, where their ancestors were brought out of Egypt. And bringing them out of Egypt, God promised them a land that is prepared for them, flowing with milk and honey. It was their place of destination. It is a one-way ticket to paradise. They were given instructions and guidelines, but because of the foolishness of their hearts, you know, it took them 40 years wandering in the desert. 40 years. But even with that kind of attitude, God is patiently and lovingly protected them within those 40 years until the time they made it into the land which God promised them. Number three, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, he said, you would have known my Father also. For from now on, you do know him because you have seen him. Jesus is really making it sure that the disciples got this. That the disciples are firm in their belief and would hold on until death. Just like what Jesus did. 
Jesus trusted his father and he wants us to do the same thing. He said to Thomas in the, in the narrative, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It is also Thomas who told the rest of the disciples to follow him until death. John eleven sixteen. But when the rubber meets the road, he gets depressed and doubted his faith. He said, unless he sees it, he won't believe. Well, sometimes we all we are like that. Just a little shake, we give in. How fragile we are in our faith. Know how weak. But he understood. God understood. God understand. That is why he was giving us the truth for us to be strong and trust in him. I remember a kid's song during our younger days. It says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and his bond of robber me is love. And Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches, and his banner over me, his love. So that's, that's how the song goes. Anyway, number four, Jesus is the only way to the Father. He is the only way to get to that prepared place, to that prepared destination, where there are mansions with many rooms, and a city with the streets of the purest gold. It's like I said before, when I learned that Brother Alex wanted to uh, serve and, and sing that song, I was delighted because uh, the song he prepared is in reference to the second verse of our lesson. So it's been a saying lately within us, well, Brother Derek and Brother Alex, we were talking once, once with our text. We mentioned that God is really helping us and he is really working on us and he is always good to us jesus is the only way for peace jesus is the only way for patience jesus is the only way for joy he is the only way for kindness he is the only way for goodness he is the only way for faithfulness is the only way for gentleness and is the only way for self-control yes these are the fruit of the spirit galatians 5 22 to 23. jesus is the truth jesus said to them don't you believe that i am in the father and the Father is in me. The words that I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me and who is doing his work. At John 14, 10, he repeated this again. I mean, uh, that was John 14, 10. And he repeated it again on John 14, 24. He said, these words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Talking about truth, I remember the lesson, this lesson from um, uh, Lalo about God's truth and his words from the Apostle Paul. Romans 3, 4 says, Let God be true. And every man a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. Meaning, those judging him, just those judging him through, judge rightly and believe him. Those judging him false, judge wrongly and do not believe him. John 1, our oh, first John 5.20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him who is true. 
and we are in him who is true, in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. As a follower of Christ, we are to walk in the truth, found on 3 John 1 and 3. We have to love the truth and believe the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 to 12. We have to speak the truth in love. Ephesians 4, 32. Truth is far more than a moral guide. Jesus declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. He didn't say he would show the truth, or teach the truth, or model the truth. He is the truth, truth personified. He is the source of all truth, the embodiment of truth, and therefore the reference point for evaluating all truth claims. That is in reference from Christianity.com. Well, Philip, on the other hand, asked him for another proof about the Father. He said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough. That, that will be sufficient for us. Jesus answered him, Don't you know, don't you know me even after I have been among you for such a long time? Actually, it's like three years. Anyone who has been with me has seen the Father. Believe when I tell you that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Even the words I am telling you are coming from the Father because the Father is living in me. And he said, or at least believe in the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, he said to them, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing or even greater. Jesus is the life. When we accepted Jesus in our heart and proclaimed that we believe in him, we got baptized, we died from our sins, and we were given a new life. It is Christ who lives in us now. Galatians 2.20 says, Thus I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He said he will do whatever you ask in his name. Ask Acts chapter 3 will prove this. When Peter and John encountered the lame man and gave him healing, First John 5, 14, 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of Him. And He said, if you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father to send you as a helper or a counselor. He will send the Spirit of truth. He will not leave us as orphans. He will send us the comforter and the rescuer. One of his com the, the commandments on Matthew 22, 37 to 39, Jesus said to them, or said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. For this is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. These are the commandments from the law. John 15, 12, it says, my command is this. Love each other as I love you. He's talking about the brotherly love. 
the Philadelphia. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. He said, you are my friends if you do what I command. Meaning, we should be ready to lay our lives for Jesus' sake and for each other. Supporting one another and working together in unity of mind is another form of love that Jesus commanded us. A sympathy, be tender-hearted for each other and always have humility in mind and in spirit. If we can offer our lives for Him, for Jesus, and for each other, it won't be difficult for us to offer our time for each other. And I would like to take this opportunity to remind everyone of our Wednesday night Bible class at 7. Our brethren are trying their best to present us good lessons for our edification and growth. We can we use the same link to join the Bible uh, class. We miss you, you know. We love you, and we need your fellowship. Hebrews ten twenty five. Paul encourages us not to forsake the assembly. Once again, Jesus, He commanded us. He's the one who commanded us to love even our enemies. He said, if you're just going to love only those, the ones who love you and hate your enemy, and what is your difference in comparing you to the heathen? Even they do the same thing. So love your enemies and bless those who persecute you. Those are his commands. Now concerning the gift of God, Acts 2 Verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house when they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each of one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Just recently, Brother Jesse gave us a lesson concerning the Holy Spirit. It was a very good lesson. He pointed out the Holy Spirit is the comforter for those who are in trouble. The Holy Spirit is the one telling us what to say in our prayers. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit will be guiding our righteous way. The Holy Spirit is Jesus in spirit. So, are you troubled? Do you worry about our present situation? Are you anxious about something? Do you have anger in your heart? Is there a loss in the family? Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. There are some, these are some of the issues that people have to face every day. Aside from this present situation we are in, this dreaded COVID-19, it seems that it is slowly destroying mankind, slowly destroying the world. Let us continue to pray that this virus will find its end. Praying is the first thing that we should do, and also to do our part diligently by wearing our mask and maintaining our temporary social distancing. Well, my friends, one my friend once told me, said, "Are, that means brother, it's better social distancing rather than distancing because you are anti-social. And it's better six feet away rather than six feet below the ground. So please let us do our part. 
and uh, these protests that are uh, coming out on our society, you know, these are it's, we are in a troubled times. These are the very reason why the world we live in is in madness. Remember the band Tears for Fears? They have this song, Mad World. I'll go quick. It says, all around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces, bright and early for their daily races, going nowhere, going nowhere. Their tears are filling up their glasses. No expression, no expression. Hide my head, I want to drone my sorrow. No tomorrow, no tomorrow. And I find it kind of funny, and I kind of find it sad. The dreams of which I'm dying are the best I ever had. I find it hard to tell you because I find it hard to take. When people run in circles, it's a very, very mad world. It's a very, very mad world, they said. Yes, the Bible does indicate that as the time for Christ's return approaches, evil and social chaos may well intensify. The Bible says the evil man and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived, 2 Timothy 3.13. Are we living in those days? Well, only God knows the answer to that, but we are experiencing it right now. The Bible makes it clear that we are unto predict the exact time of Christ's return or claim to know when it will happen. Jesus said, no one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Matthew 24, 36. The world has faced terrible times before, and so have God's people. We cannot fight the battle alone by leaning on our own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lead not unto thy own understanding. For all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your Acknowledge others' abilities and efforts. If someone feels inadequate, encourage him or her. Second, 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. It's what I said, we cannot fight and we cannot face this battle alone. A word from, uh, from uh, the our hymn, A Mighty Fortress. He said, Did we not our own strength confined, our striving would be losing. We're not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. Thus ask who that may be? Christ Jesus, it is He, Lord Sabaoth, His name, from age to age the same, and He must win the battle. Brothers and sisters, this is the purpose of the gospel. John 20, verse 31 said, But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Morals have changed. Churches have changed. Society have changed. People have changed. But God's word remains the same. In a worldly view, the only permanent thing is change. But from a Christian's perspective, the truth about God is the only permanent thing. In Jesus Christ, with him, we have 
poverty is riches. Weakness is power. Suffering is joy. To be despised is glory. Without Him, riches are poverty. Power is impotence. Happiness is misery. And glory is despised. So are you troubled? Quickly, I would like to read James 5, 13. I read, Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church and to pray over him and anoint him with oil. In the name of the Lord and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous man is powerful and effective. So are you troubled? Trust and believe in God and trust and believe in Jesus. For those who haven't given their life to Jesus yet, Brethren, sister, what are you waiting for? Jesus, the Son of God, is knocking in your, at your heart. Let him in and have him rule your life. To him is the way, the truth, and the life. He came to give us life and to live life abundantly. He shed his blood on the cross and died for us. And from God's great love and infinite mercy, we are called to be children of God. Because of Jesus, because of Jesus, we have Abba, our Father in heaven. And let us share this good news to others so that they might also have the joy that we have. Brothers and sisters, the message is yours and thank you so much for your time. Amen.